Kristen, thank you. As you know, while showers and storms are expected to arrive uh, across the state in the coming days, it's the storms we've already had that caused some damage. This is video from the Farmington Daily Times of the flooding there yesterday. The Daily Times reports the Animus River is flooding its banks, closing several river trails. Turn now to this this morning. Deputies will continue their search for the person who attacked and raped a woman in Valencia County. Investigators believe the attack on the UNM employee may have been random. The victim's mother found her beaten and unconscious at her home in Los Chavez last week after she didn't show up for work. Investigators say the victim, who's in her 30s, had blood on her face and clothes. They rushed to the back of the house and then, oh, say about an hour later, they carted her off and and then we found out what had happened. So deputies say it appears someone broke in through a window in the middle of the night. And this morning, detectives will continue their search for a suspect in a cold case after a possible breakthrough. The victim, who's now regaining her memory, gave them a description for a newly released sketch. Brittany Marcel was beaten with a shovel in her home in 2008. There's a sketch right there. For years, she had no memory of the attack until recently. She also believes she may have seen the attacker while working at Cottonwood Mall and that his name starts with an A. Meantime, Santa Fe police arrested a 20 year old woman accused of causing a DWI crash. It happened Wednesday night on St. Francis Drive in Alameda. Police say Lisa Marie Romero hit a Subaru at a red light, pushing that car into another one. Police say Romero then fled and the crash broke her passenger's leg. Police say they quickly tracked her down. Two Las Cruces police officers will face charges in the beating of a man in jail. News 13 uncovered the jail cell video from December showing the officers beating Russ Flynn, who was hospitalized with a skull fracture. Officers Richard Garcia and Danny Salcedo were later fired. A grand jury has indicted them on aggravated battery charges. So the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Department is getting some heat this morning after joining a popular social media site. It's called Nextdoor. Users can post about everything from community events to crime in the area. But some people worried about privacy are asking the department to leave. BCSO addressed the negative comments online, posting Nextdoor's own privacy policy. This site is we're not using it to monitor. We, we don't have the access to monitor to see who's living in a neighborhood. It's primarily for us to get information out to the community. The Sheriff's Department is not alone. APD joined the site back in 2014. Fire nearly destroyed a Knob Hill furniture store. It happened at Rodeo Rustic Furniture at Central and Carlisle yesterday morning. Fire crews got that flame, those flames out in about a half an hour. The owner says half of his business was destroyed. Investigators are now trying to figure out how it all started. Listen to this. A group of kids from Moriarty are gearing up for a big game. It's called the World Series for their baseball league. Yeah, these young teens are headed to the AABC World Series. It's kind of like Little League, but there's one thing that's standing in their way. News 13's Catherine Mazone's caught up with the team. She joins us live in the newsroom with all the details. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Crystal Adam. To say these kids love baseball would be an understatement. The 13 and under Moriarty Raptors have been together for four years, but this is the first time they've boasted a perfect record. These kids bust their butts all year to, to get there, and this year we, we made it. That's the Raptors coach, Daniel Wright. He says just getting an invitation to the big game in Oklahoma City is a huge achievement. They've made it to state and regionals, but never to the World Series. He says they did it this year with lots and lots of practice and dedication. Every week they have two practices and two games, but nowadays they have an even busier schedule. It's all because of one big obstacle standing in their way. Right now it's funny trying to, to get hotel rooms for, for all the kids and food to take care of them while they're down there. And the entry fee is just under $700 just to, to be able to step onto the field. A big chunk of change. Coach Wright says the barrier standing in between the team and their dreams only makes them want to work harder. Hear from the team and how they're trying to come up with the money in our next half hour. Back to you. And we wish them well. The AABC World Series kicks off at the end of July. The Raptors still have two more games this weekend. This morning, a new warning as we take a live look over our nation's capital where doctors are being asked to be on the lookout for cases of MERS, a serious respiratory illness. CDC warning comes after a new outbreak in South Korea with nearly 122 cases and now 11 deaths. The country is now disinfecting public places. They've also closed 2,600 schools and have isolated 3,400 people. We turn now to a developing story this morning. A Cleveland judge says there is enough evidence to bring criminal charges against two police officers in the fatal shooting of a young boy. 
12 year old Tamir Rice was shot while holding a toy gun last year. Community activists pushed for the charges. The decision, though, to file them is still up to the grand jury. Rough treatment of a child by a school employee, a daycare employee in New Jersey, is sparking some outrage in the community. In the surveillance video, you can see that person shove the child, pick them up, then drop them to the ground again. Investigators say they appeared frustrated after trying to put a hat on the child. The daycare center says school officials knew about the video a month ago but did nothing. Two school officials, a teacher, and a teacher's aide have now lost their jobs. And finally, take a look at this new video this morning from Boeing. It shows a jaw-dropping takeoff with a near vertical lift. Thursday's rehearsal shows off the company's newest version of the Dreamliner aircraft, the 787-9. The Vietnam Airlines plane does some pretty impressive moves as it soars over Washington. The Dreamliner is scheduled for a performance next week at the Paris Air Show. And how terrifying would that be to be on If you were on plane? board that, <laughs> boy, that's some stomach-churning stuff right there. But, but that's it's a, really that's impressive. smooth, though. Uh, very impressive. Pretty I cool. guess maybe that's the future. Maybe vertical maybe takeoffs. It is. Who knows? So we start with this. A Corrales police officer who's fighting back against paralysis is now fighting a new battle with these thieves this morning. Officer Jerry Ro Jeremy Romero says all of the tires and wheels were stolen off his modified truck at his northwest Albuquerque home. That was early yesterday morning. The truck is designed to fit his wheelchair and allow him to drive himself to physical therapy and doctor appointments. Romero can only walk with the help of robotic leg braces, but he cannot drive in them. Surveillance video shows two guys in an older Honda Accord steal the wheels in about 15 minutes. It's not only a big strain on, on me, but on my family as well, because uh, was, when, once my truck is disabled, I, I, I can't really go places. Uh, do the things I do as far as the physical therapy and doctor's appointments. So Romero says this is the second time someone has stolen his tires from his truck in the last month. If you have any information, take a look at your screen. Do you recognize these guys? You're asked to call APD. This morning, a sigh of relief for the owners of the nail salon hit by racist vandals. This after their insurance company decided, despite the lack of a suspect, it will cut them a check to help cover the damages. It's a story we told you about yesterday morning. The walls at Pretty Nail Spa in Northeast Albuquerque were covered with racist slurs against Asian people. No word as to how much money farmers insurance is forking out. We're staying on top of the massive manhunt for two convicted killers who escaped from prison in New York. A live look there as search intensifies. Officials are finding promising clues. Bloodhounds have picked up the men's scent. Investigators say they found matted grass or leaves that look like someone slept on the ground. Imprints of a shoe, food wrappers. Richard, Matt and David Sweat have been on the run now for a week. Authorities say they used power tools to break out of Clinton Correctional Facility. Now on to some overnight news. Albuquerque police say they're investigating a drive-by shooting that sent one person to the hospital with a gunshot injury. Police say somebody opened fire near Zuni and Charleston at about 11, not too far from neighborhoods. And witnesses tell police they saw a black or Hispanic man speeding away from the scene. A black or Hispanic man seen speeding away from that scene, possibly in a white car. Uh, the victim is expected to be okay in all of this. We'll keep you posted not only here, but also on the KRQE News app. We turn out to this new this morning. The man who admitted to police to being under the influence when he hit a cyclist last year could learn how long he'll be locked up later today. Police say 36 year old Robert Duran was speeding when he hit Jimmy Page that was at 4th and Nathaniel last year before taking off. When police caught up with him, he told them he had been drinking and smoking marijuana. As a result of the crash, Page suffered severe head trauma and internal injuries. The man accused of pointing his gun at two women in an Albuquerque park will remain in jail now. A Metro court judge made the decision yesterday. Xavier Amaya was caught on camera threatening his girlfriend and another woman at Bullhead Park on Saturday. He's accused of hitting one of them. Amaya's attorney wanted his bond lowered from $50,000, but the judge disagreed. Amaya is now charged with aggravated assault and battery. So happening today, the memorial service for a longtime Albuquerque auto dealer and philanthropist. Bob Turner passed away last weekend after a long illness. Turner began his career with Ford back in 1961. He managed Rich Ford from 1966 to 1990, but he then ventured out on his own. Family and friends and the public are scheduled to say their goodbyes to Turner this morning at Copper Point Church. That's at 1030. Now, because he was such a huge Lobo's fan. His family is asking everyone to wear Lobo red to the service today. In lieu of flowers, they're asking people to donate to UNM's basketball programs.
635 plans to turn a vacant jail downtown into an apartment complex could soon become a reality. Douglas Peterson, a developer, is offering Bernalillo County $1,000 for the building. He wants to convert it into apartments with businesses and retail on the ground floor. The county says the uh, the land's worth $1.8 million, but it would cost $2.5 million to demolish the building. <clears throat> that might be a win-win. Maybe so. All right, on to this. A baseball team out of Moriarty is trying to go all the way. They're heading to the AABC World Series. It's kind of like a little league competition. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge <coughs> achievement for the 13 and under team. But before they make that trip, the team has come to come up with close to $10,000. <coughs> and News 13's Catherine Mazzone is in the newsplex with all the details on how they're trying to do that. Good morning. Good morning, Crystal. Adam, now, these kids have been giving it all they've got all season. And now they finally have something to show for it. A 9-0 record and an invitation to the World Series in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. We love baseball, all of us, all together. That means the world to me and most of my team, too. It means a lot to me. Because mm -hmm. I just also been playing World Series, that's all I could say. The team has been together for four years, but this is the first time they've ever made it to the World Series. It proves their dedication to hard work and hours of practice is paying off. But they're not having to pay, now having to pay their way, rather, to get to and into the big game. The entrance fee is nearly $700. Add in additional costs like hotel rooms, food, travel expenses, to name a few, and the coach says they're looking at nearly $10,000. They're still spending weekends washing cars and selling baked goods, but it's just not enough. So they recently turned to the popular GoFundMe site, and already just since this story first aired, it's received 40 dollars in donations. They hope the community can continue to help them hit a home run. That is a lot of money to raise. It's horrible to raise that much money, but it's going to be forfeit once we get there. I think our team can do it. The World Series kicks off in July, and the team is hoping that they can pull out all the stops and make it there. Back to you. Great story. Thanks so much, Catherine. Now, for more information on how you can help, search for this story on our KRQE News app to find a link to their GoFundMe page. And taking a live look in Washington, D.C. this early hour, alarming new details in that massive attack on U.S. computer systems. This after a government worker says that it's more damaging than the Obama administration is acknowledging. In a recent letter, the president of the union says hackers have personal information belonging to every single federal employee past and present. The union believes that data there includes social security numbers, birth dates, and addresses. New this morning, the NAACP president is under fire after claims that she's not black, but actually white. Rachel Doljal, president for the NAACP in Spokane, has reportedly told media that she is biracial and has been the target of several hate crimes. But in a new interview, her parents, who are both white, simply say that's not true. Yes, Rachel is a master artist, and so she's able to disguise herself and make her appearance look like any ethnicity. When Dolja was asked about her ethnicity in a recent TV interview, she walked off and hid in a department store. New video this morning shows business owners banding together to teach an accused thief a tough lesson. The owner of a Texas <coughs> liquor store says these two men and a woman came in. They tried swiping a big bottle of vodka. When he confronted them, they did take off trying to get into their car. He did not let that happen, though. You can see he takes the keys from them. That's when his friends from the vape shop next door step in. They start hitting the offenders, holding them up until police arrive. Two people were arrested. Two others, they got away. No word on any charges, but I'm pretty sure they won't go back to that store I was again. Say, friends coming to the rescue there. Yeah.